Okay, welcome to the Board of Education work session for August 21st. We're going to move right into presentations, Dr. King. Excellent, so. Actually, to lead into that, I just wanted to say that in accordance with your contract, we are doing this, at, and we have to do it by September 15th, so what we thought was an opportunity to have a good give and take on your goals now, and then we can present it to the public again, the smooth copy early September, the first September meeting, and then we're well within the contract requirements. Exactly. Okay. Go ahead. We don't need to pledge. No, okay. okay. All right. Okay, so we have, you have attached to the agenda my goals, but if you need a paper copy, if you want to write on something, I certainly have copies if you want that. Maybe to display, I can do that. Yeah, 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 please put it up. I'll be glad to take a paper copy. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. There. Thank you. You could take that Thank you, sir. Okay, so the goals are separated or divided into three different uh, categories. So we start with professional practice goals, and we move to student learning or um, goals, and then the third section is district improvement goals. So the first one uh, speaks to my um, professional development. So I'll continue my professional learning. I said that I would participate in a minimum of three professional learning opportunities um, so that I continue to um, increase my capacity for leadership. I've given some examples of some um, some ways that you may be able to measure that. So state superintendent meetings, MSDE workshops, and my committee participation, professional learning opportunities, both internally and externally, might be online or face-to-face. -face. I participate in webinars from time to time, um, and that's online. And then participation in conferences. So that's a, a pretty uh, cut and dry one there. The next one is still under professional practice goals, and there are three under this goal. This one is about um, being highly engaged and visible in the community. And again, I list several different um, examples of evidence here. Ca my calendar events, agendas, programs, meetings with elected officials, certainly uh, written communication that you can see that I've been someplace, i.e. our weekly report that we send to you each week, um, photographs, videos. There are a, a number of different uh, ways that you would be able to measure my engagement and visibility in the community. The last goal under that section has to do with my effective communication. So of course it says Dr. Kane will communicate effectively with internal and external audiences about the operations of the district. You see a long list of examples of evidence there um, from uh, my calendar to Leadership Institute agendas, new teacher orientation agendas, ANS meetings, financial operations, our facility plans. Uh, there are lots of different ones here. Parent student handbook, the employee handbook, letters to the community, lots of ways that we could talk about or you could measure my effectiveness in regard to communication. The second goal, student learning, that one, uh, of course, again, by June 2020, I'll have completed school monitoring visits at every school, determining that instructional leadership team's progress on the school's instructional goals and uh, to include student, staff, and administrative performance, as well as community involvement. I've listed some examples of evidence again, monitoring visit notes, artifacts, agendas, meeting minutes, and so of course we do a presentation for the school board each year. Under learning goals for students again, this one is referencing uh, our enrollment in the youth apprenticeship program. So I'm saying that I'm gonna expand our enrollment by 50% by the end of June. And of course, the documentation would be the actual student enrollment and participation data itself. The third one under student learning has to do with demonstrating growth in English language arts and math among our lowest performing student groups. And typically for us, that's students with disabilities, African-American students, and Hispanic students. And some examples of evidence would be the data itself, the student performance data related to reading and math interventions, uh, showing a decrease in the percentage of students not yet meeting proficiency on district reading and math assessments. The third section, district improvement goals, I'm gonna ensure the alignment of the district's education programs and plans and resources with the district's vision and goals. 
examples of evidence would be information from our strategic plan. And we are right now, as you know, one of our innovative team um, groups is working on revising the way that we measure our performance. So we're working on key performance indicators to make sure that it is measurable. So and you get a, a presentation for each of the goals each year and there will be data associated with that, of course. Of course, in alignment with the schools and the district, we will look at the uh, school monitoring visits, financial documents, program of studies, budget requests and survey results, of course, school improvement plans. We could certainly look at district title one, two and four plans, special ed plans, uh, special ed staffing plan. So I've listed a, a quite a few examples of evidence that would show my attainment of that goal. The next one for the district goals, this one is again associated with equity. So by the end of June, Dr. Kane will demonstrate the implementation of equitable leadership practices. And I'm saying that I'm gonna show evidence of inclusive practices by expanding access and enrollment of non-traditional students in advanced placement courses at both high schools. I'm gonna ensure the development of student learning objectives that are centered on improving student performance among those lower performing student groups, African-American students with disabilities, um, and demonstrate the evidence of equitable practices throughout our organization. So in curriculum and instruction, in human resources, student services, budget and finance, operations, and in our professional development. Again, I've listed examples of evidence that we can look at to determine my effectiveness in those areas. Some of those include our data from equal opportunity schools, professional development agendas, recruitment and staffing data, our ANS meeting agendas, discipline data, budget and procurement documents, and certainly school and community events. And then the last goal that I've written for um, district performance has to do with uh, my um, management of fiscal and physical resources. So I've listed some examples of evidence again. Of course, auditors reports, our capital improvement plan, of course, our regular budget documents, maintenance plans, enrollment projections, ANS agendas, board meeting agendas, uh, evidence of our implementation of the curriculum management office uh, uh, audit is also a part of that. Just for your tracking, I just added a page on the back that wasn't here before so that you could track whether I'm on track. And this is for the mid-year conference. And we can change any of this, as you know. This is for the mid-year conference. Am I, have I attained any particular goal within each of the three areas that we just went over? Am I on track for meeting those goals? Or am I not on track for meeting those goals? And any comments that you would want to add has been added there. So now I'm ready to uh, have any discussion that you would like about any of these and certainly add any that you are uh, interested in having me to add. Okay. Um, well, I'll start out with some I have. On the, the tracking, first off, that was gonna be one of my thoughts is oh. help us track mm -hmm. um, so that we're working together on mm -hmm. meeting all the requirements. So this is gonna be very helpful. Um, uh, and then addressing, it does, I was trying, I was looking for things that are into what I'm thinking of doing, and some of them are addressed in here, but I wanted to emphasize the things that I thought were going to be key. Um, first thing, we'll just clear right off under your professional development for um, attending things in, in, internal and, and external. Um, it is important <coughs> and noted in your contract <coughs> that you need the written prior approval of the board to do um, speaking engagements, writing, lecturing, consulting, teaching, or other duties that, um, that don't interfere with your duties as superintendent. And, and uh, that incurred costs uh, to, the, to the board. Another one is prior approval for um, um, and the expenses for professional and educational meetings, local, state, and national level. We haven't, up to this point, received any. So this year, I'd like to receive them. And I thought maybe working with you, 
some prior it's prior approval and we haven't we've received after the fact review said i'm going to have gone to a conference so, so uh, maybe there's a i'll pull cool by but that that references if i'm going to be doing something outside of my work here right. that interferes with my work here no it means um anything that's going to cost the board money that's the way we read it too so you so, read two different ones. Yeah, so let me grab. Yeah, let me grab right. mine, and we can take a look at that together. Yeah, the first it's um, basically number two um, on uh, professional responsibilities. I mean, I'm glad you're doing these things. Don't get me wrong, but there, there was that stipulation under number two in the middle. It says you may, with the prior approval of the board, undertake all of these things even when there's no cost involved for that. Writing, lecturing, it says here. Right, I, I, Undertake those <clears throat> um, and incur no cost to the board, that's okay. Mm -hmm. So we just need to be told you're gonna to be doing that. We need prior approval, it indicates in your contract. See, with the prior written approval of the board, then you can undertake those. Right, but that's if I am undertaking speaking engagements, writing, lecturing, consulting, teaching, or other professional duties and obligations. Correct, and incur no costs. That's right. That's okay, but you're doing that. If you do that, you, right. you've got it down as something you're, you're this, thinking. Right, doing. this is outside of my normal role. What I've put on here is my professional development as a superintendent, which is part of my normal role. Okay, so the question is, uh, last year, you know, we want to make sure this, uh, last year you had issues that were not in your role, and that, Such that, as that we didn't, I'm just asking, no. I'm asking. Okay, mm -mm. so they were all, and that's kind of the confusion, because we're moving to number two, which is on number five, that was a confusion we had. Mm -hmm. In there it says, with the prior approval of the board, you will agree to attend appropriate professional and educational meetings, local, state, and national level, with any expenses that we pay and that we'll pay for. Can I, can so, I interject here real quick? Are you asking her, do you have any plans for this coming year? To do anything outside of my no, regular No, 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 no. I think what she's getting at is for our fiscal responsibility. Is there anything coming up that we need to know about? Because we didn't entertain it or talk about it in our, when we were doing the budget. Is that where you're getting at? That's where, yeah, that's okay. where you're getting Because I'm kind of, I'm kind of I, not understanding where you're heading well, with the, this. As, as the superintendent says, first thing is anything outside of ah. the board and when that was a question did you okay. do anything outside mm -hmm. and do you have any intention to do anything outside of the board at, this year at this point no i don't okay then the next one is yes is we we have to have you have to give get approval from us before you do any of these things that result in in money so we need to know if that's going to be occurring this year like it did last year and do we and what that is so that we can we haven't budgeted for it. So. Okay, so yeah, we do. We do budget for them. And so I always give you my calendar. So you always know ahead of time if I'm going to a conference or anything. So you always know ahead of time. If you're asking me to give you a document to sign, I can do that. I was think, we're thinking it might be useful to have that with um, like a field trip kind of request so we know where it's coming. We can project about what it's gonna cost. And the key we're interested in is how is that benefit the school system? That's so, a concern. Yeah. So I don't go to any that been... are outside of the normal. Okay. MABE, m and Pazam, basically. It's something you went to California for. Yeah, Pazam. That was Pazam. Okay. Then we, we need to understand how that benefits the school system. So the getting the permission maybe on a field trip form and in there, how you project it will benefit. And then when you return, it, it'd be useful to know how you're going to incorporate what you've learned or done there in, to improve the school system. That's sure. our concern. Sure. And last year, we, we may have had a calendar, but we don't have any information that deals with, and I, I, I don't remember, I know you said you were going to be out of town. Yeah, I always give you that. And then when we talk about our community involvement, I'll give you some understanding of what happened at that time. But I'm happy to write it, however it is. Yeah. If you if you would like that, I'm well, not going to do that. Well, we should have it because there's some things we weren't completely uh, sure of what the benefit that it, it had for the school system. That wasn't clear to us. I mean, everybody so, that goes out, that a principal okays, supervisor okays, all right, you're the final. The buck stops at your desk. You're the 
you're the head person. So you know, whatever happens in the school, you're accountable, and so you know what's happening to them. I guess the, what our question is, that's fine. We trust you 120% because mm -hmm. that's your job. Right. But when if you're doing something, all we're doing is saying, since we're the bo a board, we just want to make, I don't really care, Navy. I don't want to know in too much detail. I just want to know the, the general picture. So to give if, not in the paper, but if somebody says, I hear your superintendent was in Chicago. Yeah, she was, but she's doing this, doing that. And, right. you know, it, it, it's part of our curriculum and it, it relates to something. Just so, we're, so we're a little bit up to speed on it because, I don't, I don't talk school language. Great. So, so I, I, I will write something because you get that already, but I will be happy to write something else for you and you yeah. see if it, if it works for you. There's some confusion that we didn't quite understand. Like, give me last one. Last year. Let's just move on. No, I'm just what I said. We got it. We're going, you know, we've got it. And I think a written, written request is, is the best way to go. That way, too, like, like Mr. Smith said, we're out in the community and they say something to us. You know, where is she? What's she doing? That we'll be able to say she's gone there because, well, you know. And I'm just going to say it's none of your business or somebody. But I but do it what, is. I do what it, yeah, yeah, but it is, and I always yeah. give it to you. Right. So the, and I always right. record it to the public as well. So it's okay. I'm I'm happy to do that. I'm okay. Ninety percent stuff yeah. I have here does not have legs. You know, oh, sorry. Ninety percent of the stuff you hear right there does not have legs. Right. Nine times out of ten. But because mm -hmm. most of people don't understand. Yeah. So, and I'll be the first, but sometimes I don't understand. I just want to sit there and be as well educated yeah. and helpfully, because the quicker you hit something, the quicker it goes away. There we go. Okay. And so are you asking me to put this in my goals? No. No, no oh. just that just okay. brought to mind, okay. that just brought that mind, okay. that concern we had. Okay. So I okay. just wanted to clarify okay. that with you. Um, the, the next one, the actual goal I wanted to talk about was communication. Uh, and you have that, I think, at the top of, um, I think it's under professional practice also, C, your C. Um, and, and in that one, it, it, I think, you know, that seems to be a, a source of frustration. It's always communication. Everything is communication. We don't understand what you're doing. You don't understand what we're doing. I think that leads to, personally, I think it leads to conflict. So what we liked is, um, have more notifications on, say, issues that come up. Even if we understand that as a board, we don't take action on some of them, but it is a very small community and we are hit with comments all the time from people. And like Dick said, most of the time, I mean, they don't even mean anything, but we like to be able to say, we got it, we understand it, or we'll, we'll check on it. And we've, we've done some of those things, but they do lead to confusion. Um, so one, how do we, I'm just trying to figure out how we can make this work to where you let us know um, that you got a hold, that someone got a hold of you and this is going on and you're going to fix it. That kind of a thing would go a long ways to all of us telling all of us about it. We will then, and then follow up later with it was resolved this way or just it was resolved a certain way. I'm not going into it because it, you could face it in an appeal. So that that kind of communication I think we need to do a little bit more of and I, I noted that down you've got communication down I think that would be helpful for us um, well can I interject here honestly yes, what you hit it on the head in the end a lot of it we cannot know about in case it does go to appeal correct so we cannot sit here and you know second guess or monitor the superintendent and how she handles the day-to-day -day affairs when if it does come to appeal we should not be knowing about it no doubt about it Tammy. okay but this I, is an, an example is a, something you heard okay about well, I, something I, and and i asked her about it okay and, and then that was it so it's done so but that's what i mean we we well, the, net, the communication the, is limited and we've been talking about that being a problem the whole time like when, uh, when but again we cannot know paper. about it it's been instant at the school you know of course in this day and age everybody's on pins and needles. If, if he writes it, it goes in the paper. I, I would just like to know that it's going in the paper prior to it goes in the paper. If that's, and that's just an example, it might be something else. I don't know the details, but yeah, we had this, but it was taken care of. It was an issue. I'm not gonna discuss it because it was personnel. It might be something we can't, we're not gonna discuss, you know? But that's just some of those, you know, I, I see sometimes. And maybe we are getting it, I'm new at this. So maybe it is good enough communication, but. You know, if something does happen and all of a sudden you get a call and you say, well, the police did this and they had to come and, and, and all of a sudden you see it on either. And the worst thing is Facebook or one of those damn news medias. I know you can only do so much about it, but if you send out something to the 
principles, I don't, be, I don't know how, but how, and it's a slippery slope. How much do you tell us and how much, you, I'm not that you don't tell us, how much do we need to know and God, we could be spending all day on the, on the thing, but it's just some of the stuff we need to have a, and it, it's a tough one word to draw, you know, it's like speed, you're going 58 or 60, you're speeding at 58. So what I send to you is if 911 was called, uh, if there's some emergency, if the police are involved, then I send that to okay. you. So you already get that. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I'm not sure. Like what you sent to me, I wouldn't have even, that, that was a question that you had for me and I, that wouldn't have even been on my radar, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's not something. So if, if you could just help me understand, give me just a little bit of what I could do to send, because I send you the emergencies, you get that. Right. Uh, if there's something legal, you get that. Um, help me out. Well, what are some examples that everyone was concerned with this year of not being notified? That would be, give her an example. Because I get notified of things. It's a couple of things we can't talk about because they were personnel. So okay. that's something we have to talk about in closed session. Okay. okay. There's some personnel things yes. that we're not. Okay. Well, maybe we can just, we can just talk okay. about that one. But I, maybe we just kind of play that one by year. But yeah, I, I just want to do what a, you're expecting me to do, so I just really need to be clear on it. All right. All right. We'll let you know on okay. the ones that came okay. up. The other one uh, I have is um, an additional goal, I believe, which is sort of put in here, and I, I think I saw it in a couple of places, is, is school safety, um, and especially with all the, these gun things. Um, I know what I'd like is a, a, a full briefing at the beginning of the year of where we stand. I know um, Mr. Pender has overall, over, over time, briefed us off and on with stuff going on. And I think we need to get that in a, a formality and the goals to, to get a start a school briefing of where we stand on school, on school safety. When new changes come in, um, new initiatives you do, and I would like us, to, if, they're int if anyone's interested, I'd like to be able to, you know, personally observe some of the drills that are held. Um, and then see how those, as far as your, your be the best you can tell, uh, or your staff can tell, it, it's contributing to school safety. Not having an issue means it's working, I suppose, but I'm, I don't want to be running into an issue. And that would be a communication thing that you would tell us too, if anything sort of comes out that might, might have, might could have resolved, it resulted in a problem. So the school safety, I'm really interested in knowing more about um, us monitoring it more. To m monitoring it, we probably are, but I don't know how we're monitoring it. Understanding it more too. Huh? Understanding it probably. Yes. Because so. it's. I'm an example. This is back before they had all this stuff. Back in the '90s. We were sitting at a board meeting and we had evacuation plans of a high school, Queen Anne's. So they were telling us that they take all the kids to the stadium and put them there so we know where everybody is. And somebody, parent comes up and says, that's the dumbest place to put them in the world. You have an active shooter in the woods, he could get everybody right there and you got an 18,000 gallon propane tank within 100 yards of the place. We didn't know that, but it, it and I know you don't do that now, probably. <laughs> but, uh, it's just, you know, if we don't know the details because we're not professionals, but just a little idea of what the game plan is and some of the, you know, things we do. And because our parents, I'm scared as a grandparent of what goes on. And, and it's not because our school system, I feel safe in ours. You know, I got another granddaughter up in Cheshire Town, you know, so. Can just, I ask a question though? Is it possible that we don't put out the plans because we don't want people knowing where we, where we take our children? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would not put the plans out. Um, I mean, that's putting them at risk. Because of different situations that always occur, like you're talking about active shooter and, and assailant, we, we're constantly tweaking them mm -hmm. and looking at them because each situation brings a new... Yeah, a new uh, flip. Yeah. Where are we, we going to go? I have no problem just, you know, <clears throat> letting you know what we're doing or doing a presentation for, for Dr. Kane on behalf um, for that. that. That's not a problem. I don't really want to discuss a whole lot of plans. I understand. Um, but, well, I uh, like the idea, like when we go to... I pick my granddaughter up at school. I can't get in there, and that's a good thing. They don't need, because if I can get in there, somebody else can get in there. Yeah, and we, and we can go over that, and we can go over some, some basic new things initiatives so, we did. You know, when the but public sister says, well, no, you're not allowed in here. I'm not either, because, you know, something could happen. But I'm not going to tell you why. And when you were telling us about the monitors down the halls and all this, you know, 
and and then you know the kids come home and tell you little things too. I forget what my granddaughter's name, but she's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Know. She she knows. Oh, she does. <laughs> you know. and that's the that's the tricky part. <laughs> you know, from a, a first grade or a kindergarten student, you know, and how you work with them compared to somebody that's in twelfth grade. That you know, right, is, is going to get it. So. And this is already included in your improvement goals anyway, like the strategic plan, safety is part of that. I see emergency crisis plans in and we report, too. yeah, and we report out Go every too. year on it. So, but you weren't here, so you, but. Well, I'd like to have yeah. an early, a l early, early report when we, each year when we start school. I know what, I think, I don't think we should let it, I think we should do it each year because we all have new parents come in every year. And so that we have a better and idea. New board members. Can I yeah. say one, yeah. just in reference to Sheriff Hoffman and putting something on Facebook. I'm not saying he put it on Facebook. Oh, no, no. He puts a press release out, but then I got 10 people on yeah. the school bus saying something happened, you know, in Farfield. It ran off, and on, I asked my granddaughter, oh, no, this bus driver just took the wrong turn, you know. We've, we've had communications with their PIO, and so that we do a joint statement, mm -hmm. and it's not them throwing out, because what was happening was before we had all the facts, there was a release going out, and, you know, a lot of the information there wasn't accurate. Yeah, I understand we want to put it out there as soon as possible, but we were, you know, we worked with Sheriff Hoffman and we come out with a joint statement now, so it... it but he won't send something out officially until... It, it should not come out that way, no. We work with his uh, PIO and uh, Lieutenant Meal. And, and if it is, you know, police-involved activity, I'm giving you a heads up by email. So what the article will be, whatever happens in the press release is the official for everybody. But when I get the, okay, so police were called or whatever happened, 911 happened at whatever school, then as soon as I get that, then I send that to you just as a heads up. And I always say, and we'll follow up when we learn more, you know. I think one of the misunderstandings of the public, a board only works with you. I mean, you're our only employee you run the school system. What they don't understand is that we're not involved in day-to-day -day or everything that's supposed to happening. But that perception's not gonna change because when somebody has a problem and they don't know Sid personally or you personally or something, they're gonna come to somebody. Sure. Now we can send them to the right person, mm -hmm. but that's just, that's just and, the reality. especially in a small community. That's right, right. Especially in a small community. It happens if we're in really, large ones. <laughs> I understand, but, but, you're, but you're a little- The best analogy yeah. is arms around and no fingers in. Yeah, but I mean, you just, you know, kind of. This is, this is the way, not yes. new, not new to me. So, but so if it's police involved and I know, mm -hmm. then you're going to know before the press release. The, um, the fire alarm was just activated at Mattapeak Middle School, like literally five minutes ago. That's why I walked out. I've sent Dr. Kane an email. Most of the time I would call her and say, hey, here's what's going on. But I sent her an email just in case. You know, you're aware of this was a dirty smoke detector. Kenilworth Volunteer Fire Department is there with Jim O'Donnell from the maintenance department. So you'll see that. Yeah, and so I've been sitting here, not in my email. So sorry. No problem. No problem. Okay. I just know that I'm not. It's not that I. It's not included. There's some school safety here. It's my priority. I'm just trying so to tell you. So can you give me the goal? Is. Just, just if you just write out the goal, how you, how you want it, then we'll. Okay. I'll include it. I'll do that. Um, and the last one I have is. Um, it's a method that we we conduct the budget. Um, the clear transparency on the budget. Um, I'm very concerned right now about the Kerwin uh, because the governor's come out and say he's not funding it, or he, he's not. He needs to figure out a way to fund it, and he doesn't want to fund it. It's very expensive. Um, I don't feel it was in the paper today at mm -hmm. the Capitol. So. I'm worried that we're going to end up similar to the way we did years ago, where we had to pull money out of somewhere else to pay for some of this stuff. So to get prepared for that, I th and some discussions I've had, like with Tammy, who's been on the board before, and, and probably Dick too, there's some confusion. I love, I personally love the way the budget is presented. And once we under everyone understands that we, what you're presenting in the budget is a, um, a change from last year so last year was we were proved that that was good and any change is what we reflected in as we were working through the budget this year pluses or minuses I think it's easier to understand and easier to explain to the public now leading up to that there is concern from the board members that we don't fully understand exactly what's inside each line item 
In the past, we went through line item by line item by line item because we were always trying to reduce the amount of money so we could pay for something else. And um, that's, that's been something we've done in the past. I think it's valuable that even if we take the budget we've approved this year and start with next month's work session and go through a certain number of line items in the budget so that we fully understand what is being spent in that line item. Um, and it, and we, there's a lot of budget there, but I think we need to get a better picture of what's in each of those line items so that by the time we start the budget process in January, we all have a better feel for, for what's being spent in that particular line item. And we can develop some ideas and maybe we don't want to spend that money this next year because we really want to do this in the budget process starting in January. So we need some education. Um, for today's budget, what we've already approved, that's the best way to start it. And we can do a little bit each work session so that we become more familiar what's in each item. So that be a part of your di district improvement goals as far as programs and resources and budgeting. It's right. And we find out what things don't do work and what don't work and what we could get rid of, what we can expand on. I mean, that would be a part of the budget process, correct? It would, but we could, I'm hearing you say something a little bit different. I don't need a new budget, a new budget goal. I just need to have some, ex some a process to understand it better. So the goal the would be? Well, you, you probably have the goal in here. I haven't seen yes. the goals on having mm -hmm. Budget yeah, requests and survey it. results and, that, and using all that, yeah. aligning programs and resources. I, I could see we probably need to talk about that as, as we go along. That way in January we'll say, okay, this program worked, this one didn't. We want to expand this. So how about this? We talked, we had a uh, exec team retreat yesterday, and so we hashed out a lot of things, and one of them was the budget because I can't remember. I believe I was talking to you, Captain Kelly, that you do want to go through line by line by line. So but what I'm hearing you say is you want a little bit of each work session. Yeah, I mean, it's too much to try to get in one big thing. So, so maybe we set aside a half hour or, a, you know, 20 minutes each work session to go through a group of them. Okay, so our plan was to start in October um, because we just have got to get some things set up with school right now. So. We, if that's okay with you, if absolutely you, okay. If that works, then we have a plan for that, so we can we certainly okay. mm -hmm, that's great. We can certainly do that, um, just that for process-wise, so that you can understand what's in each line. Um, we're going to give you you have the budget book, but we'll we'll have John will have some backup documents for us so that he can tell you specifically what's in each line. So one example that we've given you previously is, say for example, Mr. P's salary. Mr. P's salary comes out of administration, it comes out of special ed, it comes out of instruction, because he supervises all of these areas. So we'll tease it out for you like that. Does and that work? Wherever we can to understand the, uh, the, the line items. Basically, we need to better understand the line Are items. the descriptions that are currently in the budget book not um, exp explan explanatory enough? No, they for, need, it needs to be expanded on some things. Okay. But we for can send that to you. I, yeah, th that I would be appreciative. I mean, because yeah. things yeah. like dues exactly. and subscriptions, to me, that's pretty self explanatory, but right, maybe right. you want, well, you know, other things in, you know, in conjunction with that or Some contracted services what it is that's yes. being paid for. you got my 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 first email in january you saw yep. how in depth mm -hmm. i, I mm -hmm. kind of went and um and i uh that would be great okay and I, what we were talking about at our last meeting, and Ms. Perluski brought up that some of our interventions weren't working and we're expanding and looking at new st new things I, I would love to hear you know what's working i would love to know if we're doing anything i mean besides like the virtual academy and all that that'd be lovely so. so, but outside of the budget piece, you're just saying in addition to? What, what, yeah, what you, maybe what you recommend, working. things change. As part of the budget, I just want to be clear on what you want. I, I'm thinking like, you know, if something's not working, can we better use our money somewhere else? Because of September the 30th, I would think we know how much maintenance that we're getting, roughly. We know By when? Should, September the 30th. Mm, yes. So. You know what? I would well, just no maintenance of effort. Once oh, we, a okay, little bit after that, once okay. we get our but, but, official yeah. enrollment. October yeah. yes. 15th, yes. usually. Right. And, yeah. you know, we can argue all we want, but the big thing is salaries. You know, sure. so 85, 86% so of the people, or we're not paying people, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen. But is there things we can move around? And maybe we can't. But, you know, if, if just because I don't think we're getting right. as much. I mean, at some point, there's only so much money out there to get. And when. 
you know. Exactly right. When you take 86% of the budget is salaries and wages and benefits, unless you're going to cut people or positions, uh, obviously we don't want to do that, and or their benefits. Okay, so that's status quo. I mean, that rolls from year to year to year. Then you throw in electricity and school bus transportation and all those things that we have to do. All of a sudden, this big $100 million budget comes down to thousands of dollars. Correct. So yes, we can go through the exercise. But we're all we're going to be at the end. We're going to be talking about thousands of dollars, not hundreds of thousands of dollars, certainly not millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So we can certainly go through the exercise. But I just want to frame that for you, because there's things we have to do that, that you know, that we just can't get around. Do we know five years ago what our payroll was and our Absolutely. benefits compared to this year? Absolutely. I mean, that's going to be the number. Absolutely. That's where it's grown. Absolutely. Okay, you okay, that was my last one. But this is not a new goal, just a no, process no, you want to go through. Right. This process. Well, see, for the benefit of, we didn't, we didn't get this so, till now. So mm -hmm. we are trying to work up what we think is important. And so I've just emphasized the three things I thought were sure. important. And you've included them in here, but that's kind of the interest I have in their higher, higher, moving them up the priority list in my doctor. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. I, I had one question. Professional practice goals. So maybe this isn't part of a goal, but it's part of a question. Like, I know what I have to do as a nurse to keep my certification. I don't know the specifics of what you have to do. So are these goals part of meeting your certification? Um, no. For, for my certification, it was to attain it. There were courses that I had to take. It was experience that I had to have. So as long as I continue doing the work at this level, I'll continue to renew my certification. So you don't have to do CEs in so many years. And okay, that's what I was wondering. That's nice. Yeah, because when I keep a certification, I have to prove I'm doing so many. If I'm meeting that I goal, I was a classroom with, teacher. Yeah. I'd have to continue then, to take certain courses. But okay. I've reached. Uh, you know, I have a doctoral degree. I've had the experience as a superintendent, assistant superintendent in that that realm okay. for my certification so I've done that I need to continue to do it to continue to renew okay how do you prove do you report hours or present I, mean, I just don't so know what the process is it's four years and so I have to submit sort of I call it application loosely but I have to put in paperwork to MSDE so they can see that I am still doing this type of work okay. at this level and then they approve it there are um, so to get it, you had to do some law classes, and there are a lot of different courses and things like that that you had to do, but I've met that requirement, okay. so I just need to keep doing this work. Okay, so the question is in your contract, it says you will hold and maintain a valid certificate issued by MSDE as required by law and furnish evidence of the certificate to the board. So that's you've already right. gotten that. Yeah. You, you got that. That's my certification. Okay. As long as you're for four a, years. a superintendent of a school system. Or Susan. assistant superintendent. Or. You keep, so you don't even know her either. I'm sorry? You don't, I mean, I'm just asking. So, I, yeah, so, I have to so, get in every two sure. years to keep my license. Yeah, so, so it's on a four-year basis in Maryland. And as long as you've met the requirements for that level of certification, so teachers have one, administrator one, administrator two, there are endorsements that go with it, and then there's superintendent. Um, so as long as you are doing that work, so teachers may have classes and things that they need to some take credits. reading, yeah, some reading credits, but we don't at this level. We've, we've met that requirement. And since we aren't practicing teachers, we don't have to do that okay. part. Thank so you. I, I, I had would no think idea. Because, yeah, I would think because you are, are you a practicing nurse? I've certified advanced public health. So in the state of Maryland, a registered nurse doesn't have to do continuing education. Okay. But if you're certified in a specialty, you do. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if part of your goals is keeping your certification and where you are in your certification process. Yeah, so that is part actually of my job. So if I'm not certified, I'm not gonna be uh, assistant soup or assist a superintendent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now how about supervisors? They are administrators. So yeah. that is same, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. Yeah, we could, we could give you a, a brief mm -hmm. one. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I just, I didn't know where that falls. I know every time I come up, for evaluation, where are you in your? Mm -hmm. yep. I don't have that. I didn't have anything. I'm good. I just had to just when you run over a couple things. You mentioned only when you sit there and say about improvement for 
um, different groups of people, I do want to make sure we do it for everybody. And so, I know we do, yeah. but when you single out a certain group, sometimes it's interpreted that others aren't. And I find sometimes a lot of people need help, and some people are high flyers, probably going to go through with no problem. It's that 40 or 50 or 60 in the middle, and I just want to make sure they don't, that we sit there, and I know we do, but then in your goals, that's part of your goals too, not just singling out. I don't like to single out groups because well, we're all in this together. Well, we do it because we have such achievement gaps, such gaps in student performance. And so in, in districts that are relatively high performing like Queen Anne's County, students perform well, but what gets hidden is the gaps, the groups that are not performing. And so I have to maintain a focus on those student, those groups that are not performing to continuously increase their performance because they can be hidden. So when we say we are at 87% pass rate and whatever, we've got some student Every groups second. that are at 40 yeah. and 50, and that won't ever be noticed if we don't call it out and focus on improving student performance. Yep, we do a great job and we're, we're doing fine with the general populace, but for some student groups that don't perform, nobody would ever know. But there are also some people who don't perform that are even aren't in those two groups or three groups or whatever. That is saying. correct. So that's what, that I is just correct. want to make sure that everybody, you know, that's one thing. And then the other thing is, and I've mentioned before, can we, I just like to train people to make sure, because I know we're short on people and I think our report says we're short a couple of people, maybe you filled it by now, I don't know. But <laughs> can we promote within and can, is there any kind of program we could have where when we graduate kids that are going to different schools, and our teachers, we can follow them and say, guys, here's what we need. Let's come on and come on back because, you know, we need you back here. We do. Okay. Yeah. So for teachers, we have the uh, Teacher teacher Academy of Maryland. Uh -huh. It's a TAM program. And those students, um, you know, they can go to school anywhere, but we have really been focusing on Salisbury University. So because they're right here on the Eastern Shore, at one point in time, Salisbury, they hired, I mean, they trained up teachers, you know, lots of teachers on the Eastern Shore across Maryland. Since then, funding has increased in colleges of education, schools of education, and Salisbury is no exception to that. Dollars in colleges and universities generally go to sciences, STEM fields, that kind of thing. So consistently, teacher ed programs lose money. They were not accepting, not just Queen Anne's County students, but Eastern Shore students to the degree that we felt like they should. So there was a concerted effort this past year. We gave names of students, all of the districts here on the Eastern Shore said, okay, these are the students we need you to look for. And, mm -hmm, and out of, so- out of, out of Queen Anne's County. Out of Queen Anne's County, uh, Kent County, Eastern Talbot, Shore. yes. So we all, the superintendents, well, met with them. Was Queen Anne's County. Exactly. <laughs> if we, if we, I wouldn't want anybody listening to think it was only Queen Anne's County because it, it's no, no, Queen I'm, Anne's and, and everybody I'm open else. I'm for everybody. Eastern Shore. Eastern Shore. But I'm also Eastern. sitting there thinking, you know, if we've educated somebody and they go to Queen Anne's County, they got roots in Queen Anne's County, they go away to school, just track them and make sure that, you know, especially with, and you know, because there are certain fields we need more help than others, and it changes, I guess, from every two or three years. but. Just across the board yeah just so so we are so we are doing that mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome i just find you know because if somebody's I, I don't mean i just me if they're from here and they've grown up here they're used to being here they might have to come back i would think then you know because if you live in california i don't know why you want to come here or i don't know why you want to live in california but that's beside it you know? <laughs> well we got some but I know. Yeah. but so but yes we are doing that and um in addition to that so sometimes when we're out recruiting um, and having college fairs or, or whatever, we meet students who were our students. And in fact, we just hired back or hired a teacher, a special educator that I ran into at one of the colleges and she lives here and went to school here and wanted to come back here. So we made sure that, um, you know, she got interviews and she was selected. When we go to, when we go to whoever saws, I'm just picking saws because that was not, we have, we know the kids that, Queen Anne's County, or yeah, we sure. mm -hmm. so we can actually touch base with them too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My two cents worth. Okay. So I'm going to provide you a um, an idea of a goal pertaining to um, school safety. School safety, right? And because uh, that was a priority of mine. And I guess you guys didn't have any additional ones you wanted to put in there. Okay. 
All right. Any other questions? Okay. Our, our next uh, agenda item is policy revision priorities. I wanted to mention uh, the calendar. You all saw the calendar, and I think that's that's awesome. Um, it's an excellent way that we can move these along and keep track of them and uh, get updated on whether we meet those goals or not. And that's that's a great way. There's a lot of policies there. And uh, some of them I didn't realize we didn't even have policies on. So thank you for the calendar. It's just additional work for the staff, I know. But I think it's important um, so we don't run into other Can I get problems. a copy of that? Do you mind? It's, okay. We get that. Thank you, ma'am. So, and these are the individuals. Go ahead and explain it if you can. I'm sorry. Yeah, so these are, this is a schedule of calendars as they're going to be presented. Mm -hmm. So we've identified by month as sort of a calendar by month, and we've said what, what policies we will present um, to the calendar, I mean, to the policy committee. Right, and we don't want to, and thanks to Mr. P, overwhelm the policy committee with a gazillion policies for review. So we've pretty much tried to keep it to three um, or less. There are a couple of months in here that have two, um, and if something comes up, you know, during the course of the year that we need to get something, um, a policy revised or what have you, then we will add it to those months, hopefully, if, as long as we can. Um, that only have two policies there. So you'll see some that are have an asterisk by them, and those right. are the new, those are, there's a key, brand new policies. And um, some of them are because of legislation. Some of them are because they're just old, old policies, and we need to renew them because our practices are different or because legislation is different, like I said. And then at the last, at the very end, you'll see that there are some policies that we're going to ask to repeal. So we start, and we don't have a whole slew of them. There are a lot of them, but this is just some of the ones that we're going to start with. So that list may grow as the course of the year goes on. But for now, these are the ones that we're going to be looking at um, because they are easy. Once you look at them or the policy committee looks at them, they'll see that those are that's like no brainers. They shouldn't be there. Mr. Blissey, can I ask, have we decided the dates or are we sticking with the old calendar? For the policy committee, committee meeting, yeah. it'd certainly be, you know, at, at the request. I believe the structure that we have was at the request of the board to meet on a Wednesday before a board meeting, so you didn't have an additional meeting. If there's, if that does not fit your schedule, and you would wish to, so our next a, one is is September fourth. Are we going to stick with that? Correct. Okay. I just, I, yeah. We've got some work to do. To yeah, we sure have a lot of work to done. do. So you just want to, you send that to me? Just sure. We'll send out a we'll send out a calendar invite okay. again um, to the board members in that particular committee. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So that's the plan. Because I have some okay. of the dates being Tuesday instead of Wednesday. I believe one of them Wednesday. Okay. okay. Thank we'll, you. Um, we'll clarify that. Sure. Questions? Any more? Good. Uh, next item on the agenda is the contract approval for the transportation contracts. Yes, um, Board President uh, Captain Kelly, I'm looking, and Board Members, good evening. I'm looking to have approved um, tonight the um, school transportation contract with our four LLCs: Bay Area Transportation, LNS Bus Service, Northern County Exchange, Queen Anne's County Bus Lines. This will be a three-year contract. Um, if signed tonight, would begin t tonight and end on June 30th, 2022. Um, if you look down at the bottom where the physical impact, you can see the minimum increase of 173,000 this year, next year, 140,000. And for the following, the third year, the contract will be 127,000. Um, where the budget source item is for FY20, it's going to show you what our total budget is for transportation for contracted services. So that doesn't include special ed, it's just contracted services for transportation for the four LLCs. So basically, I mean, I looked at a couple things in there, but it's 3% or less? It's about 3% the first year, and then it goes down to about 2 
um, 2.5 then about 2.2 the following year and I would like to point out that we had a rough time our last go around and you know this time was very um, it was more of a joint effort As a matter of fact the, the board uh, or the LLC members wanted to, to come tonight um, it was a coordinated effort amongst the four groups that we sat down once, twice a month for pretty much the whole entire year. Um, and I want to add the legal costs that we had associated with this are minimum compared to what we had many, many, well, five years ago or so. So that's about the increase, though. You're right. And I, and I looked at each one of them or certain things, but not the whole thing, I can tell you. They're mm -hmm. all identical. Yes, sir. They're all identical. Um, the board attorney, uh, Mr. Burns, has reviewed them. Um, you know, changes were made as far as verbiage, but each of the LLCs has the same identical same contract. contract. Yep. Same terms and conditions, mm -hmm. the same requirements. Yep. And the last section, it's, it's not really as important to the board members, but for the LLCs, they really sat down with Margaret Ellen and went through um, the specs on the school bus. That was something that had not been done in many, many years. Um, what the state requires, what the, the county requires, um, are two different things. So having those specs laid out, there was a lot of duplicates in there. So stream, streamlined for that part. That's the questions I have. Explaining it. Yes, but that, that's what that part is, where, where the lines are going to be. Any other questions or? What was on the board, Doc? Could you explain that? Because we have some with lots of lines through them, and then we have others that, that are smooth copies. Yeah. And it's confusing. So, on, and I apologize, there's about six or eight words on pages three, I think five, six, and seven that when I took out those items, like it might have had a the or an and taken out. But probably what you're referencing is the right. very back. Right. And those are the specs and we left those in there so that we know in the future hey we had this but we wanted to remove your copy is not color coded but it's very important to leave those items in there so that we know that hey we've changed this part here you know we're no longer requiring this or the green like indicates you know the state so just because there's a line item through that last part it, it doesn't mean that you know it's it's striped only what you really want to focus in on is the first like nine pages um, and then attachment A and attachment B and C. The specs, like I said, if you would have looked at the old copy, you would have been very confused of trying to figure out what each bus was supposed to have. I mean, that's all tires and sizes and stuff, yep. but it's all. It aligns with the MSDE, um, their transportation department, and it aligns with our requirements here in the county. Um, I don't, I still understand we have a lot, you know, we have a contract that I'm going to sign tonight mm -hmm. and those lines are all going to remain in there. Um, that, that's just in the bus specs. So the bus information, yeah, they're going to stay in there for those, um, for that section. It's the last section in there right. is where, so. where is that at? Um, it has no effect really on the contract. It is what we require as a school system and I'll just, it's nice to have it all in one location so that, and that's the main reason it's in there. In, in years past, it wasn't in there. Um, it just was a separate attachment, but it's nice to have in there so you can go back and look at it instead of trying to find it. You know, say Margaret Ellen retires or, you know, I retire or something. It's, it's all there in one. See the changes that we've made from that? You want, you want to, yeah, you want to look at the, the changes for the specs because sometimes you know, the, each member of the LLC may want something different. And as a group, we sit down and work through it to come through, hey, this is what we want. And we just felt it was good to have a living document that we could see the history of it. Because again, somebody could, if, you know, Margaret Allen retired, some, somebody else could pull out something and you're never going to have that document. This re way, it's, it's right there and you can, you can sit right there and see, hey, we did have this at one time, but we come to an agreement that it's no longer necessary to have, you know, A, B, and C. Um, okay, I understand. Oh, it's a fluid document. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. And that's just and the attachment. That's right. just an attachment. This, this and the specs for each bus is okay. not the contract. So the meat of the contract. Yes. Contract the meat of the contract, contract. yes. Right. In section. And it could, section. I mean, that last section could change based upon any federal or state requirements. Captain so. Kelly, I, I would add, uh, Darren Burns, for the record, that um, there is a key at the start of Schedule D, for mm -hmm. example, that actually indicates the strike through means not permitted. So there's a little more substance than simply a deletion of something. And this has an analogy in the construction area when they take the AIA form contract and tailor it to your school system, they'll keep the strike throughs in there to show that it's changed from the base. Oh, so okay. I, there is probably some benefit to doing See that. Because I didn't go through the entire 65 pages either. <laughs> oh, it's no. long. Okay. It's voluminous. But I did look at the first nine <laughs> thoroughly. But my question on the, uh, I have a question that we discussed in the very beginning. I couldn't find the exact page. We talk about this is the minimum increase. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I put on there, it's minimum increase. We, we don't know what our population is going to be. We don't know if we're going to have to add a bus run or take away a bus run. So, at the, the bare minimum, that's what it's going to cost us for the next three years. But I can't give you like, you know, it's going to be this number right here because. Well, you got a fuel surcharge. Yeah. It could well, Where's Johnny going to Two new live? buses. Or, yeah. or Johnny moved. Something could happen. Coming in, who's enrolling? Who's yeah. leaving? Right. Just want to clarify that. Yep, that's fine. Minimum. Sure. Um, and the other one is for summers, we have a minimum guarantee of eighty miles in the summer. Uh, I didn't realize. So. We were transporting people what we've had in the past there was never any kind of agreement with um, the LLC's to provide summer transportation um, it was just basically a handshake and hey we're going to get a hundred and something seventy five dollars um, you know a day we're going to have um, that would be for like the migrant I'm sorry for the um, title one schools the migrant school would be like per mile um, you're gonna have a hard time getting contractors that want to come out when you get to like the um the title one schools for their summer schools most of the pop the population is right there kind of close to the school for the most part and to have somebody come in for you know two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening it's you know that's a fair it's a fair shake in there to have that put in there but it will also keep us out of arbitration and those types of things in the future you know if somebody says, well, hey, this isn't what we agreed upon in the handshake. I mean, this this is now in the document. It's never been there before. So. Okay. So it, get, it puts everybody on the same plane. Same page. Everybody's, it's, yeah. everybody's got <laughs> I'm turning and looking. It's not the bus drivers coming in uh, on June 20th. Summer school starts July 1st. And they don't and know what they're, they're doing. They're trying to work out something and figure out that. Now, you know, ahead of time and also you know, writing the grants, we can get that in there, that it's piece fair. in there. Yes. It's fair. So in the summertime, it's a daily contract that runs so many, I mean, you tell them up front how many it's going to be, but then it's the program that like, it ceases to exist in the, the summer. The program, like the Title I, the Meyer, that's what's who's funding that. Okay. That and, that, portion and that's of the cost it. you plug in. Yep. And say, here's the bus cost, the cost is going to be four hour minimum, 80 mile minimum. And you have it right then, it's not, you know, calculating per mile, boom, 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 boom. So. It will definitely help the program managers writing the grants right. for these summer programs budget appropriately uh, because it's a known cost, right? I, I think when you read this, Captain Kelly, just, um, just reading the purpose and then doing the budget source, I think will satisfy. Yeah, I just have a couple questions. Okay. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, um, under, um, I guess it was page uh, five. The last line, is, these are just for clarification. Sure. I'm not going to change the contract. I know, but I just want to understand the first sentence under that. Um, let's see. Not that one. The parties hereby agree that each company has a right to assign and reassign routes, hours, and mileage for each of the routes. So I didn't realize that the companies do that. I thought... We, Margaret Ellen does that. We have each LLC has a routing representative, yeah. and they come together with Margaret Ellen, right. and then that's how we determine: Hey, can we shave off this route? Um, can somebody else, like we were able to cut out a route this year, this upcoming school year? Can we um, 
you know, do that in the future. So they sit down, I mean, sometimes two, two times a month. Um, we also sit down with the principals come in and they have their input into the routing. But the, the LLCs aren't just going to say, hey, we're, we're just going to make a new route for the heck of it. I mean, it, it doesn't, it has to go okay. through the committee. This just reads that they can do it. And that, that's the way I read it. So it has to go through the routing. Oh, committee. it goes through the routing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. Because you have opt out forms coming in all the time, don't you? Yes. And some roads are unsafe. Some roads are unsafe. And then you may find um, where one bus may be traveling, especially up north, 15 miles. And that family, the students graduated. And, you know, so can we take that 15 miles off of there and plug it onto somebody else's bus. And keep in mind, we do have the opt out, as you were saying, but a lot of times you still have to save those seats just in case something happens and we don't have a 72 passenger bus, you know, with 90 kids on it trying to head to Northbrook, um, you know, so. Yeah, I understand there's reasons. I just, mm -hmm. this, this sure. sounded like they had a lot more autonomy to make changes. And I knew that that committee existed and it's just the way I read it, I guess. No, it's a pretty lengthy process. Uh, and uh, the another one I have is, um, oh, they, just describe it, again the annual reimbursement of $800 a bus. That's just, who gets that? What? So the, the $800 um, goes back into, like, when we pay them to bring their buses to in-service, uh, to get inspected several times a year. Um, it also covers... Um, you know, the medical, physicals, those kinds of things that we're paying them. It was $400. It had not increased, and in, I can't even tell you the last time, I want to say probably 16, 20 years, it's remained at $400. And that's one of the areas where we lag behind in the state, you know, comparing to that. So it's an $800, you know, one time cost for that. Per, per year? Per year, yes. Okay. And this is the 800 is, you checked at the state with the other state? We're doing in other, other uh, jurisdictions. Yes, and we're still below. Up with the number 800. Yeah. That's double what was last year. Yeah, it's double what it was last year. But if you look at the percentage of the overall cost, that $800 is, is, is pretty minimal to the whole entire. Um, matter of fact, hang on one second. It's lower uh, than many, right? You're, you're looking at $25,000 that this year will go up next year the following year it's you know already in there it's not going to go up again and following year it's not going to go up again okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so we've been lax about that for uh we're probably several. about 23rd in the state okay yeah. right That's it makes pretty sense much then. bottom yeah. and uh, like our county funding and the last one i had was um uh, page number nine is the uh, item in here about um, to year-to-year -year basis for the contract contingent upon available government funding, although we agree to make every effort to spend mm -hmm. this. So that, throwing that one line in there about government funding, I think what my mind that covers if, like when we lost four and a half million dollars in one budget year, then we go back and talk to them. Because mm -hmm. they were very reasonable that year we had that horrible, 2012 I think, I, that horrible cut. I thought they were very reasonable in saying, okay, we understand. I'll say this, my, if you go back and look over the historic data, my, my predecessor, Mr. Kavanovich, um, there was a lot of years where he went to the bus drivers and said, hey, you know, there was a financial crisis or something and they, they did not get an increase. So, I mean, that does happen and it has happened, you know, in years past. Um, 2009 so, to 2012, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's say that. Yeah. Even before that, contract we don't pay any benefits, no health care, no. no FICA. So, I mean, they're in all fairness, you can squeeze an apple as much as you want, but if you don't have the apple when you need it, you're gonna be in trouble. Yep. So, if we do that get in a situation, that just in case, yep. yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Um, yeah, that was all I had. Um, but I wondered, could you introduce the I'm LLCs? Sorry. I'm yes. right behind this. Thank you. Um, with the Bay Area uh, transportation, we have Mr. Eric Canzo. LNS bus service, we have uh, Lauren Chenaud, we have Laura Bostic from the uh, Northern Exchange, and from the uh, Queen Anne's County bus lines, we have Mr. Raymond Aaron. Um, we spend a lot of time together, and it has its good times and it has its rough times, but uh, we've, I feel that we've had a really good year in working on the contract, and 
um, they would like to partake in signing the contracts tonight if you are to approve them. So. And we would also like to say that Mr. Pinder worked very di diligent with us. Uh, he was very respectful. We all sat down together and had some good conversations. He put a lot of time in with us, and, and we all really worked together to, to get this done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. Thank you all. Um, uh, I'm happy that it's a three-year contract, too. <laughs> we don't have to. And everybody knows what's going going forward, and that's very helpful. So thank you all very much for your work with, with thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have anything else they'd like? So I'd like to entertain a, a, a um, I'm sorry, a motion for the to approve the transportation contracts with Bay Area Transportation LLC, LNS Bus Services Incorporated, Northern County Exchange LLC, and Queen Anne's County Bus Lines LLC for a term of three years beginning today and terminating June 30th, 2022 in the amount of um, a minimum increase in FY20 of $173,134, a minimum increase of $140,420 for FY21, and a minimum increase for FY22 of $127,812. The source of the budget for this motion is FY2020, $5,445,000. FY2021, $5,585,420. And FY2022, $5,713 dollars in oh, 500 i'm sorry five million seven hundred and thirteen two hundred and thirty two dollars so moved second a motion and a second um uh, mrs wright please well, members please respond when i call your name captain kelly yes mrs harper yes mrs morsette yes Ms. mr smith yes i have four in the affirmative motion carries okay thank you great thank you. also I believe, do this this isn't just four, it's just four groups, but how many buses? I mean, this when we use these figures, it's spread out over a lot of buses, 70-some? 70 70-some, 70 yes. So, I mean, you know, it's not that much, I mean, it's money, but it's right. over 70 buses, not, you know, that, so it's a. Could we have a signing up here while we have the? Sure. If you don't mind. No, I don't mind. You want blue? Sure. Okay, they're coming one at a time up. Yep. Mr. Hanzo. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
So, the, really, it's a responsibility of the teacher to select the team members. I just sent that schedule out this week, uh, trying to get all the schools to schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, yeah. And you know, one day they might pick a morning in the fall, but they might pick an afternoon in the winter. But you have to fill out the form, and it's like a lot of stuff okay. that you have to do. No, this is actually a during, during not being a professional development day when who was in session on that. And then we would work with that team that provides so yeah, that way they're pooled, that way construction's still going on. And then you know what? You're right. I only have the. Uh... Okay. So they complain. Okay. We told you 47, whatever it is. So they get taxes. The first one is the assistant and then the practice of the Wi Fi. The price is on big. So they have electronic homework. So it's homework they never, ever in their life knew. It was going to cost them to work. Yeah, because she's pulled them out. She's like, all right, I've now got them. I told a, a friend of mine. Oh, you really don't. I'm telling you. Like, that was awesome. Hey, we Just for graduation, the new teachers from my college and the extra parents back then, spark plugs, four tires, you know, not a cruise. Yeah. Put you on speed dodge next time. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Thank you for that. Sir, at least this is two weeks prior and not the day yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Congratulations. What? People are making money. Congratulations, Scott. So, yeah, thanks for having me. And it's a different day. Yeah. 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 That's fine. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Miss me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's just been a good time. Is there anything special? Yeah. 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 Ye
Okay, next item on our agenda is the future meetings and events. Dr. Kane, would you go over this August 26th uh, meeting? So this is a podcast. Um, myself, Mr. Page, Mr. Bell, we're going to be, so it's, um, it's a talk show podcast. And there is, uh, it's just an opportunity for us to highlight great things that are going on in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. So I'm not going to do it by myself. I'm going to bring um, some support with me and we'll talk about our environmental education um, work and we'll talk about our arts work. So it's just an opportunity for us to tout the things that we're doing well. What radio station is it? I was going to ask the same thing because where do you listen to a podcast? Uh, it's uh, on YouTube. It's YouTube. Yeah, it's um, they're technologically behind. I might have my calendar. Yeah, it's yeah, nothing it's that public. I was familiar no. with. But uh, can we can we put it out on some on our website when you do it so that oh, if the general oh, yeah. public wants to see it, they can oh, yeah. see you can how do a do link it. to YouTube or. Um, um, CEI? Is it the local station CEI? It's not. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's nothing national. local. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. It's on the internet. Yes. It's, on the internet. it's, just, Queen, it's just for Queen Anne's County. No, it's not just for Queen Anne's County. Just like my TV show. Mm -hmm. It's a radio show. Mm -hmm. It's a podcast. It's internet based. Okay. I just, I guess you're, you're, you're doing the call on Queen Anne's County. Yeah, just talking about the good things that are going on in Queen Anne's County. I just want our residents to see that. It'd be good for people in other places to see it, but our people should be able to see it. I mean, that's what we're doing it for. We'll get it for you. Okay, what? Yeah. You know, you can just whatever. You should call it that. And, you know, in honor of Dan, of Dave Brown. Yeah. Good, good things, things are, are happening, happening in Queen Anne's <laughs> County. <laughs> He would maybe think he of would it just a, like that. He would love that. <laughs> okay, we'll get it later. Um, the next meeting is September 4th, school board meeting, regular monthly meeting. Uh, the 6th, and I've Can I digress? There's a policy meeting at 2 o'clock on that day, September 4th. Oh, okay. okay. I'm order. asking. Oh. What time is that? Oh, well, you don't have to worry about it. It's, it's a committee. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a committee. Tammy represents yeah. us on. Uh, September 6th, and I've notified you all this, uh, is Ken Island High School County Commissioner Turf Field dedication at 6.30. Um, and that's, um, you've got a flyer that, that um, Mrs. Wright gave us. Uh, let's see, the 6th, yeah, that's the 6th. The 10th is a County Commissioner's meeting at 5.30. That's our, uh, our gathering, our once a month meeting. Is that right, the county, where Mr. Bell is going to talk? Okay, once a month, I myself. And I'm sorry, not our not our meeting with the commissioners. Mr. Bell's actually going to the commissioners' oh, meeting. Okay, never. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I misunderstood. Mm -hmm. okay. So before we used to do the bridge to excellence. So now he is doing this report. I'm sorry. Okay, so he's going to present at the county commissioners' Correct. meeting on September 10th. September 13th is the Queen Anne's County High School turf field dedication at 6:30. Also. And the second to the fourth of October is the May annual conference. So I need a motion to move into executive closed session, please. So, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move to go into closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion. Discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or, uh, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction to consult with counsel and to perform an administrative function. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to go into executive closed session. This is right. Board members, please respond when your name is called. Captain Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have four in the affirmative. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, staff.